This is a PC I built myself a little while ago, but I couldn't get it to work. And when I made this video about it, I got a lot of comments with different opinions telling me how to fix it. But I think I finally know what the issue is. If you watched my previous video, I basically built this PC for a really cheap price of 270 US dollars. And my aim was to flip it for a profit. Except we never got to sell it and make a profit. So that's what I want to fix. I want to sell and fix this PC once and for all. This PC was sitting in my closet broken for three months. So I had to wake it up from its sleep. Here it is. Cluttered with the rest of the mess. So this is the PC. In its current state it has an i5-9400 underneath, 16GB of RAM, a Z370 motherboard, 650W power supply, a 1TB hard drive underneath, and a 256GB NVMe SSD yet to be put in. You may notice it's missing its GPU which I took out for some quick filming but here it is. We're going to put in our GTX 1060 so that we can turn this PC on and see what's wrong with it. Now let's take a look at what it does when we try turning it on. Five beeps. And when we look up what five beeps means, we get sent straight towards a CPU error. There were two people who pointed out a crucial error from me as to why this PC wouldn't work. In my previous video, I tested the i5-9400 in a different motherboard to see if it was at fault, and it worked on that motherboard. However, I mistakenly used my RAM in one channel and never tested dual channel memory in the working B360 motherboard. I also never tested the B channel on my Z370 motherboard. And after testing this CPU in the B channel of the Z370, we were able to confirm it worked only in that channel, concluding the CPU had a dead memory controller. I actually went back and tried a few different combinations of RAM and found that the i5-9400 did work with dual channel memory. I was so confused. I then tried to populate an entire channel and that's where I got the original symptom of the five beeps. So I think it doesn't like populating all the slots of a channel, which I've never seen before. And then it wouldn't work with a single channel of memory in the B channel like it did before. And then I couldn't replicate this issue again. A super, super weird CPU issue. So I decided that this CPU would realistically be too unreliable to keep in a system. So I'm just not going to use it. These were the comments that pointed out the problem. And I also got a lot of comments saying the problem was that I skipped so many BIOS updates to go from an old version to the latest which didn't turn out to be the problem while it was a good point. So after finally concluding that my CPU's memory controller was dead, it was time to get a new one. I went searching on my local marketplace for good deals and I stumbled across this. A CPU motherboard combo with an i5-9500F. A great fit to replace our faulty i5-9400. So I went and picked it up for 200 Aussie dollars, also known as 130 US dollars. I considered swapping our Z370 for this Z390, which was a higher quality motherboard, but I decided to save it for a high-end build I deal with something like an i7-9700 or even an i9-9900 later on. With a quick test of the CPU in the Z370, I was so relieved to see this PC post after such a long time. Here we have the final test bench with the i5-9500F, so we have a dedicated graphics card for that. We're going to pop a heatsink on and see if we can get this thing to work. Please excuse the setup. It's not ideal, but like ideal for the camera, but it is what it is. Oh, look at that. Did we get it? We didn't get it. Okay, one second. And there it is. The i5-9500F working with dual channel memory. Very good thing to see. So we could finally reassemble the PC to get it running and ready to sell. Okay, so now we're just going to set up the platform. The CPU is already in. We're going to do our RAM now, now that we actually can do all of the RAM. Next, we will tackle our SSD. Our 
SSD is in. We'll do thermal paste now. And now we can apply our heat sink. And that is complete. Just grab a look at it. It's a lot heavier now, but that is ready to go into our case now. Here is our case as it stands. I've left the fan in because its RGB is actually already hooked up to the little hub that this case provided us, so I really didn't want to mess with that. And we've got to fit through all of these cables to get our motherboard in. So watch and enjoy the process, I guess. Now that our motherboard is secure, we can mount the fan back onto the CPU cooler. Now we're ready to make all the necessary connections. Now we're ready for our glorious GPU. And we can finally plug in our PCIe power. That is this PC finally ready to try and turn on. And here is the moment of truth. Whoops. Here we go. It looks very good. And would you look at that. Look at that. After the 16 gigabytes with the CPU, all channels populated. All channels populated. That was a lot of work. I'll also install Windows 10 on this PC. I put the marketplace listing up and here is the PC ready to sell. I took a few photos and was so proud to have been able to fix it. I decided to list it on Marketplace for 650 Aussie dollars or 423 US dollars, which should be about 210 Aussie dollars profit or 117 US dollars profit because the new price it cost to put this PC together is now 440 Aussie dollars and 306 US dollars. I honestly felt so relieved to finally fix a PC that I was so stumped on and I'm really thankful for the knowledge I gained from everyone who watched the previous video. This was my build. Thank you for watching and please like and subscribe if you wish to and I'll catch you guys in the next one.